It is absolutely fascinating to me and a little bit frustrating that we humans still can't agree on what to eat. We still don't know after years of nutritional research what the optimal diet should be comprised of. And I've been thinking about this question for years now. And by now I really believe that there is not the one optimal diet that works for everyone, that anyone could eat and we could guarantee that that person stays healthy until old age. And in this video I want to talk about why this is the case, so what factors should influence our nutritional choices. But on the other hand I do believe that there are some patterns that we can apply that makes our diet more optimal or more healthy, no matter what diet you're gonna follow. Of course your lifestyle and your general health status are big factors when it comes to the question what should you eat. A person who works out like five times a week and tries to build muscles definitely should eat something different than a pre-diabetic who's slightly overweight and wants to lose weight and become healthy again. Another probably obvious factor that influences how we respond to food are our genes. I found an interesting study that illustrates this fact. So in this study they isolated teenagers for 120 days and for the first 20 days they just measured the metabolic rate and then they fed the teenagers 1000 calories extra per day for 100 days. And not surprisingly all teenagers gained weight. On average there was a weight gain of slightly above 8 kilograms. But what was even more interesting was that the span of weight gain was pretty big. While some only gained 4.3 kilograms of body weight, others gained up to 13.3 kilograms. So this shows that our genes do play a role in how we respond to food. Our genes can also predispose us to certain diseases, like the ApoE4 gene predisposes somebody to Alzheimer's. And there are also other mutations that should influence your nutritional choices. But we will come back to this later. And genes are also by no means destiny. There are many factors that can influence our gene expression. But again, more about it later. First I want to talk about three different studies that beautifully illustrate that everyone reacts different to different food. So in the first study they wanted to figure out whether the glycemic index, so how much our blood glucose actually spikes after we eat carbohydrate rich food, is actually true for everyone. And what they found is that this is, no surprise, not the case. So they fed different people just white bread which should have a glycemic index of 70 and what they found is that the glycemic index was very different from person to person. So for some the glucose should really, should really high and for others it remained much lower than 70. Then another study followed up on those results and attached continuous blood glucose meters to about 800 people and were checking their response to different food. And what they found was again huge differences in terms of glucose response to food. For some people, for instance, eating a banana didn't spike the blood glucose at all, but cookies did. And then for other people, it was exactly the opposite. One could argue that for those people where carbohydrate-rich food spikes the blood glucose quite a bit and stays high for a while, should probably consider a low-carbohydrate diet. But another study also checked whether there are differences in how a high-fat diet impacts our health. To be fair, the, what they call a high fat diet is not technically a low carb ketogenic diet, but they still nicely illustrated that some people did better on a high fat diet than others by measuring the immune system response on this high fat, high carbohydrate meal. What they found was that for some people this meal was perfectly fine, there was no, not much increase in inflammation, while for others it induced quite some inflammation. We also know that um, some people, or actually a lot of people, do very well on a low carb ketogenic diet, so high fat diet, but others gain weight on it. So again, there are differences. There seems to be at least two major factors that impact how we react to food um, besides our lifestyle, of course. And one is kind of again connected to genes, but it's more in the context of evolution because our ancestors also ate very different diets depending on where they lived. 
For instance, people who live close to the equator obtained about 50% of their food from gathered food and only about 25% from fish and 25% from meat. But people who uh, live further north or further south, so let's say for instance Europe or Northern Europe, they obtained the majority of their calories from fish and animal products. So and since we lived at hunter gatherers for the majority of humanity, this is probably a big factor on how you personally react or respond to different foods. And then the second factor, and I can't really emphasize this enough, is our microbiome. We are only starting to understand how the microbiome affects our health, but we know it does, and it does severely so. So in the study I mentioned earlier, where they continuously measured the blood glucose levels in 800 people, they actually tried to predict how the blood glucose reacts to certain food by developing an algorithm. And this algorithm had one of the strong factors that went into this alg algorithm was the microbiome, of course, besides blood parameters and also lifestyle. Eventually, the group, the research group, was able to pretty much uh, predict how people responded to food by putting in this microbiome, blood parameter and lifestyle data. Again, we're only starting to understand the microbiome and how we can affect it. And I'm not saying that diet A is necessarily better for the microbiome than diet B, because it also depends really again on your genes, on your immune system, as well as the state of your microbiome. But to give you one example about the power of the microbiome in terms of weight loss, we can look at the study that was published in the Journal of Science, where they transferred the microbiome from either obese people or from lean people into mice. And what they found was that the mice that received the microbiome from obese people also gained significantly more body weight. Something that also needs to be taken into consideration is how certain genes are expressed. So basically the study of epigenetics. And again, the microbiome and our lifestyle are some major factors that affect our gene expression. But let's put it like this. Even though you are at an increased risk to develop a certain disease based on your genetic profile, it really doesn't mean that you have to get the disease because you can influence your gene expression and also your, let's say, your inflammation status and many other health parameters via your diet and via your lifestyle. Okay, let's talk for the end of this video about how to make any diet more optimal or to put it differently, what an optimal diet should contain. I think one of the most important factors that is generally neglected is that our food should be nutritious, meaning it should contain all the essential vitamins, minerals, fatty acids and amino acids, because they are essential, they are necessary for life. And if a diet doesn't contain them, then our body can't run optimal. For instance, many minerals are kind of cofactors for enzymes in our bodies. So proteins that do the job. Some enzymes are required for um, duplicating our DNA. Others are required for antioxidant properties. And if we don't have these essential nutrients, our body just can't run optimal and we might develop diseases. The risk for nutrient deficiencies becomes even bigger if we follow diets that are highly restrictive. For instance, a vegan diet can work, but you probably or you have to supplement, not probably. You have, will have a vitamin B12 deficiency and you're probably also at a risk for other nutrient deficiencies. So again, it can work and if you are ethically a vegan, it's completely fine, but you should consider supplementation and make sure you get the right nutrients in. Okay. I hope this video was helpful and I'm sorry to disappoint you that there is not the one optimal diet and I know that many of us, including myself as a teenager, have been influenced by people on the internet who promote this or this diet and says that this is the perfect diet for everyone. And I know I'm also sometimes promoting this or this diet experiment like my ketogenic diet weight loss experiment which was pretty successful so it seems to be working good for me but on the other hand I also before tried a plant-based diet which 
didn't really work out for me. It wasn't very good for my health. So instead of just following somebody, go and try things out. Maybe get yourself even tested to be 100% sure and inform yourself and then make a personalized nutritional decision on your health. Consider subscribing. YouTube thinks that you might like this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Life.